welcome here. It's amazing the word of God while they busy closing the my brother and sister. I just want to tell you the word of God's amazing. I saw scriptures this week that I read, but first time that God just opened them up to me. And that's the wonder of the word. The word is powerful, alive. Amen. It's not because I'm clever, it's all about the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us. That just open up the word for us. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that even this morning you're going to open up the word for us and reveal the Father to us, reveal Christ to us. You're going to lead us in all truths, and that's why we ask, Holy Spirit, oh, Holy Spirit, come and lead us, feed us, open up the word for us so that we will not only hear but that it will impact our lives and change our lives. That's my prayer this morning. Thank you for the opportunity this morning just to, to eat your word. Come feed us, O oh Holy Spirit. That's our prayer this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome here. Um, you know, I normally does don't mention the topic of what I'm going to share this uh, normally. But today I want to um, tell you what's the title of the message. It is, there's a huge difference between purpose and destiny. I'm going to talk to you about purpose and destiny because I believe and remember, I'm part of the church. I believe we as church did mislead people. And, um, and I want to share about that to you this morning. Uh, if you're a teacher, I know there's a lot of teachers here and there's a lot of headmasters. And Machil is one of them. But if Michael... Uh, he, he looking for a, a mass teacher and somebody apply. Let's, for instance, I'm applying to become a teacher there uh, at his school. Then he will ask me, he will go through uh, what I study, what I've sent to him. And they say, mm, Mr. Matthews, I see you're a mass teacher and you're well qualified and uh, I want you in my school. And uh, he said, listen, remember your purpose, listen to my words. Your purpose in this school is to give mass to the grade 11 and 12s. And I want you to equip your children to do well in the exams with mass. And then he explained, and then I'll tell him, but Lister, sir, I'm also a very good rugby player. I'll help you with that. And... Um, I'm not married at this stage. That means I'm going to look around for, for a lady in this school to marry. And I will tell him the next thing. I'll tell him, listen, I, I want to be a teacher for at least 30 years. How big's my pension? Will you please explain to me how big's my pe uh, uh, pension, what my pension will be? Perhaps he will tell me, shut up, do your work. But... Then he will tell me perhaps after six, uh, 30 years, your pension will be 1 million rand, for instance. When I'm giving my classes, I'm not focusing on the maths on the, that I need to teach the children. I'm thinking about the ladies, and um, I'm waiting for my pension. <laughs> Number two, I'm, I will do rugby and coach the kids. But my focus is not on the maths. My focus is on the pension and the ladies and the rugby. Guess what will the headmaster tell me? He will call me and say, listen, Mr. Matthews, I told you your purpose in this school is not girls. It's not rugby. It's not about your pension. It's all about maths. Your purpose in this school, maths, guess what? 
And that's how the church missed our purpose. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ, it was all about the pension. It was all about you going to heaven. You're safe, you're going to heaven. And nobody told me there's a purpose for you here on earth. Amen? My brother and sister, there's a huge difference between my purpose at the school and my pension eventually at the end of the year, of, or, or 30 years. There's a purpose for us here on earth. Our destiny is heaven, but that's not our purpose. And I want to show you this to you in the scripture. Jesus had a purpose on earth, and we're not going to read it. We know it. What was Jesus' purpose on earth? Why did the Father send him to earth? To save the lost, the sinners that were created in his image, to bring them back to the Father. Amen? That was his purpose. And he fulfilled his purpose. Let's go to John. I want to read in John 17. John 17, I'm going to start there. Uh, we're going to read there. Remember, and I'm not going back to John 3 verse 16. Why did the Father send Christ? Because of the lost, uh, of the lost that he loved so much. Listen, I'm just going to say it again. The Father sent Jesus Christ to earth because he loved the human being, the people. And that's why he sent him. But I'm going to read, that was John 3.16. I want to read in John 17, verse 4. Listen to verse 4. Uh, I'm at John 17, verse 4. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. Let's stop there. Jesus said, I've glorified your name on earth. What, how, in what matter, how? By doing what you sent me to do. Amen. Amen. Listen. Glorify. By glorifying the Father, it, it's not only to worship. Jesus said, I've glorified your name here on earth. By the way that I was living, the, the things that I did, the things that I did glorified the Father. So, so important, my brother and sister. Verse uh, 6. I've magnified your name to the men who you have given me out of this world. He revealed the Father. Listen. He revealed the Father to people. That was his purpose. Right, I'm not going to go on. We know that he died on a cross and he took us out of the kingdom through faith. The only way, and I don't want to share that, you, we need to believe that and, and, and declare him Lord of our lives through faith. He took us out of the kingdom of darkness and he brought us back to the Father, to a loving Father. That was his purpose, my brother and sister. But he knew he couldn't do it alone. That's why he called 12 disciples. Let's go read that. This scripture is the first time that I saw this in Mark. Let's go to Mark 3. Mark 3, verse 13. Just before we read that, just before we read that, I want to just to share this, and I've said that a lot, but I need to say it again. Remember what happened. The moment you give your life to Christ, Jesus, then we've been reconciled with the Father. 
and there's peace between us and the Father. So important that you remember this. I want to mention it because that was the purpose of Jesus. He reconciled us with the Father. And now there's peace in between, uh, between us and the Father. Right, now let's go to his disciples. Uh, Mark 3 verse 13. It, it reads as follows. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself want, wanted. This is important. Let's go on. And they came to him. Then he appointed 12. Listen. He appointed 12 that they might be with him and, they, and that he may send them out to preach and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out demons. And then the 12 uh, disciples' names were mentioned. There's two very important things that I read here. There were more than 12, but he said, I want these 12, and he named them. And he said, I want them to spend time with me. I'm going to share about that. He called 12 and he said, I want to spend time with me. Number one. Number two, then he said, I give them now might. Verse 14. Might with him and he that they might send them out to preach the to preach and to have power to heal the sickness and to cast out demons. Amazing. From the beginning. Listen carefully. From the beginning, he said, I want these twelve. And then he said, Now I give you power to heal the sick and to cast out demons. Amazing. From the beginning. Why? Because he wanted them to spend time with him, listen, with him, so that he can demonstrate the kingdom of his father. And not only demonstrate, then also he wants to send them out. Let's go to Matthew 10. The same scripture I just want to read in Matthew 10 uh, to you. Matthew 10. What was the disciples' purpose? We're going to read it again in, in, in Matthew 10, verse 1. He said, And then he had called his twelve disciples to him. And listen carefully. And he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. Oh, oh, my brother and sister, Jesus called them and said, listen, there's now purpose for you. I'm sending you. We're going to read this. I'm sending you out now with power to do what? To heal the sick. To cast out demons. That was their purpose. And Jesus knew that he's going to spend only three and a half years with his disciples. Then he will be away. But then he sent them out. As the Father has sent me. Remember John 20, 20 I think. As the Father has sent me. Now I'm sending you. Are you with me? Let's go to... Um, perhaps let me stop here. What was amazing to me to read here, this was before they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Before they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, remember, Jesus gave him his, the authority he had, the anointing that he had, he gave to his disciples. Let's read, we're still at Matthew 10. Uh, 10. Let's go to verse 5. Matthew 10, verse 5. He called them. Let's go to verse 5. These 12, we know who's he talking about now. These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, right? 
He did not speak to the others. He took, he took the East 12 and said, listen, you guys, you go out. Verse 7. And as you go, speaking to the 12, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Clean, uh, clean, uh, cleanse the leopard. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you receive. Flee, freely give. Why did he call his disciples? He had a purpose for them. And their purpose was short to destroy the works of the devil. That's why he came. 1 John, let's go 1 John 3. 1 John 3, I've read the scripture to you. I hope I get it. I think it's 1 John 3. 1 John 3 verse, verse 8. 1 John 3 verse 8, the B portion. For this, oh beautiful. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. And that's exactly what he told his disciples. His disciples, your purpose, your purpose is go. Let's read this, what he said. Uh, let's go to, to Mark. Uh, let's go, no, let's go to Matthew first. Matthew 28. Matthew 28, then we'll read Mark a bit later. Listen carefully to what was their purpose. Matthew 28 verse, let's read from verse 18. Jesus, Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations Baptize in them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And though I am with you always. But he said, teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. What he was saying, what I taught you disciples, I want you to teach your disciples. That means Jesus had a purpose. His purpose was to destroy the works of the enemy. And he said to the disciples, disciples, this is your purpose. Destroy the works of the enemy. You, disciples, you need to teach your uh, disciples to do the same. Mark 16. Mark 16. Verse 15. He's talking to the disciples and he said to them, Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creation. He who believes, listen, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs shall follow those who believed. And that's me and you. Are you with me? That's me and you. These signs will follow those who believed. In my name will they cast out demons. What I'm showing to you, what I'm sharing with you this morning, very important. Jesus had a purpose and he fulfilled his purpose. But he carried that purpose over to his disciples and said, disciples, your purpose is to destroy the works of the enemy. But it, you need to go out and make disciples. And guess what? Eventually we are now disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you with me? Are we disciples? Yes. yes. If you're born again, now you're a disciple. Now what's your calling? What's your purpose here on earth? To destroy the works of the enemy. 
of the enemy. I'm not going to sing, but I, I want to read a song to you. Actually, two, two, two songs. Fuller and you're going to sing. We're going to sing at the end one of them. But we sang a song this morning. It's not here. Let my life song sing to you. The third one. Lord, let my life sing to you. When people look at me, they will see that I'm glorifying you. That was the one song. But the one I want to share with you. There is power in the name of Jesus. Do you agree? Yes. yes. Then it's, it, it says, um, to break every chain, to break every chain. The second verse says, there's an army rising up. Let's sing it. There's an army rising again. There's an army rising. Who is that army? You can put up your hand. That's me and you. To do what? To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Amen? Amen. Do you agree this is true? Yes. For sure. And that's why my brother and sister, Mr. Matthews' purpose was not to eventually get his pension. His purpose was to give mass. Your, your, your purpose is not to go to heaven. Your purpose is to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. That's our purpose here. Jesus' purpose is the same as our purpose. The disciples did the same. And they were supposed to tell us not to go to heaven. They were supposed to tell us, go and break every chain. Heal the sick. Lay hands on people. Pray for them. Amen. Amen. That's our purpose, to break every chain. How? In the name of Jesus. Sometimes, and I'm not going to go through, yeah, there's still time. The, first, the way that Christ did it, he demonstrated it first. Remember, he called them to him, to spend time with him. Why? To show them, and he showed them a lot of signs and wonders. And they were amazed. I'm not, in, in Luke uh, 4, I think you can go and read. I'm not going to read. They were amazed when they saw the power and authority that he had. And then eventually he sent them out. We read that in Matthew 10. He sent them out and they did miracles. Sometimes they failed. And perhaps let's focus a bit on that. Let's go to Mark Mark 4. And I'm sharing this. I want you to see they did not every time succeed. In Matthew, when he sent them out, they came back with, and they said signs or wonders were flowing through their, their hands. But I want to read one scripture where they failed, and that is in uh, Mark's, Mark. 4 verse 35. He told them, get on the boat, let's go to the other side. And I'm not going to read that. And he was tired and that way, he fell asleep on a pillow and there was a heavy storm. And um, they woke him up. Let's read that. Uh, Sleeping on a pillow, that verse 38. Sleeping on a pillow. And they woke him and said to him, listen carefully, this is amazing to me. 
Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? God is with them, the one who, who do signs and wonders. And they woke him up and said, Lord, don't you care that we are perishing? And sometimes, listen carefully, sometimes we in situations we feel, Lord, where are you? Why are you away? Why are you sleeping? Don't you care that we are perishing? I'm perishing. Sometimes we carry burdens. We battle with stuff. And we, we, some, we, we smart. We don't say, Lord, don't you care? But in our hearts, we feel, Lord, where are you? Why are you not listening? But listen to his answer. Let's read that. Um, I'm ending again with verse 38. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Verse 39. And he rose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the, sea, and the wind ceases and there, were, and there were a great calmness. But verse 40 is very important. This is a lesson. This is the, 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 the important part of this. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Why are you fearing and why is there no faith in you? What was he telling them? He's telling them, I gave you authority. I gave you power. A few chapters before. I gave you power. Remember, we now in chapter what? Four. In chapter three, we read that, that God gave them power to rule over sickness, demons. And that's why I ask him, then, why don't you have faith? That means they were supposed to say to the storm, calm down. In the name of Jesus. That's why Jesus is answering them. Why are you fearful? Why don't you have faith? My brother and sister, listen carefully. Jesus did what he needed to do. That's why he said it is finished. His disciples did what they need to do. And they passed away. They were cruelly, um, most of them were also uh, crucified. Most of them. And guess what? They gave us the button. My and your calling, guess what? Is to do what? To destroy the works of the enemy. Amen. He said to his disciples, wait. Acts 1 verse 8. Go to Jerusalem, but wait until you receive the promise. But if you've got the promise, you need to go out. My brother and sister, God gave his Holy Spirit to us. And he gave us the Holy Spirit not to have goosebumps. He gave us our Holy Spirit to empower us. That we will break every chain. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My brother and sister, that's our purpose. If you're born again, Christian, that's your purpose. Not only the pastor. It's your purpose. It's our purpose. To go out. To be light and salt. To let the kingdom of God down. Let the kingdom come. Let your will be done. Through my life, as it is in heaven, so through my life. Amen. 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 Our destiny is eventually... We go to heaven to be with him. But that's not our purpose. 
Our purpose is not the pension. Our purpose, go. Lay hands. Amen. I want to give you an example, uh, and I'm sharing my life with you. Uh, I told you, I think I did tell you that um, the Lord, I was once in a shop, big shop, and uh, I felt the Lord told me, uh, pray for this man. And I was shy. I, I, I ignored him and I went out and did not pray. But guess what? God's still speaking to me. And he told me, what about that man? I said, Lord, next time, next time. So I went there again. And luckily he was not there. Why? Because I was afraid. I was looking for him, but he was not there. And I thought, God, you're so merciful. <laughs> but guess what? I had to go again there. And the guy was there. And the Holy Spirit told me, he's here. <laughs> so I decided I'll go. I'm not going to speak to him. And as I left the building, because my heart was just, I was just shaking, you understand? But as I was standing outside, I just explained, God said, go. So I turned around, went to the guy, he was standing in his department, there were a few people there, not a lot, luckily for me. There were not a lot of people, and I called him towards me, and I said, listen, can I pray for you? I just feel I want to pray for you for healing. His answer to me was, no, I don't need prayer. So I felt, ah, oh, I'm, I'm so glad. I, you understand? Because I'm, I, I'm feeling everybody's going to look at me. So as I turned and walked out of his department, he said, he called me back, said, sir, please come pray for me. So I turned back and I did pray for him. What, what happened to me? The self listened carefully. Isaiah said, he must increase and I must decrease. There's only one way to do this, my brother and sister. I had to decrease. God said, if we humble ourselves, he will lift us up. And I need to die to obey the Lord. And I did pray for him. And I went out. And it's an opportunity that God can use. Guess what? Friday, this Friday, past Friday, me and my wife were at the function, a very glamorous function of, the, let me say, this new hospital. And there were a lot of people. And one of the ladies came to me and her, and she was testifying how good the Lord to her. And I just sensed in my heart, God said, pray for her. That God will use and empower her because she's got a very important um, post and uh, she can influence leaders. So I felt the Lord said, pray for her. Now you must remember they were Hindus and they were Muslims. They were unbelievers. And they were, you understand, all of them were standing around. And I said to my wife, let's pray. Guess what? It was tough, but I knew in my heart, this is what God wants to do. And it's not because I'm, I'm special. I'm telling the truth. Every time you do this, you just sense God is start going to use me more and more. But the only way up is the way down. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that lives but Christ that lives in me. Am I there? No. The disciples failed the Lord a lot. You and I am going to fail a lot, but guess what? Let's stand up. Let's go again, because that's our calling. That's our purpose. Amen? That's our purpose. God wants you to be light and salt in a very dark world. I don't need to tell you that. This whole world, even our own country, it's a dark place. But he cho chose us. And he believed in us. And he trusts, listen carefully. 
He trusts us with his kingdom. And his kingdom will never fail. Never. And he's trusting us with that. Joseph, he's trusting us. He's trusting me with his kingdom. And that's why he said, I'm going to empower you with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will dwell inside of you. And he will lead you from victory to victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My brother and sister, you're calling your purpose to be light, to shine like never before. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, very Father, that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus Christ to reconcile us with you. He brought us out of the kingdom of darkness and gave us life and life in abundance. Empower us with the Holy Spirit so that we will be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And we thank you for that. Thank you for being saved, born again. Thank you for being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Father, help us that we will live out our calling. Father, I pray for each one of us this coming week that we will shine your glory the people around us. That they will see Christ in our works, in our words. That they will experience the love of the Father as never before. That's my prayer for each one that's here this morning, Father. Each one in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Is it challenging? For sure, my brother and sister. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's easy, but the way to be able to do that is only when we die to self, take up our cross, and follow him. Amen? And God trusts us with his kingdom. You can do it. Let's testify. Let's be light this coming week. Amen? Amen? Let's be light. Thank you, Peter.